Welcome to my solar addiction. Today's video, what is grid trickle and how I solved it? Today we're going to talk about something you've probably seen on many of the forums. Uh, have you ever seen your hybrid inverter sell energy or use energy from the grid when you're setting it for self-consumption? In other words, the PV is going to deal with the loads and then charge the batteries before it does anything with the grid at all using energy or sending energy. And it's sending or a little bit of energy or using a little bit of energy. And you don't have a grid cell agreement with your energy provider. So if that's happening, that could be an issue. They might send somebody out to do an inspection. And if you're a person that's doing DIY solar, and you might not have gone through the inspection process when you set your system up, you might not want that inspection. It might be something that you want to avoid. So what is grid trickle? That's what I call it. Energy going back and forth. And it's often a, not a lot of power. I'm talking maybe 100 to 200 watts, uh, maybe peaking somewhere around 300, sending or receiving from the grid, even in self-consumption. It's an issue that seems to happen with all hybrid inverters. I've got experience with multiple hybrid, hybrid inverters, and they all seem to send a little bit or receive a little bit. Right now I'm running an EG4 system, and I've come up with a solution to deal with grid trickle. It's not totally automated because it involves the uh, off-grid mode enabling and disabling. I had the same problem with my Solark system when I was running my house on that for a couple of years, year and a half. I've solved that problem with the EG4 software, and I'm going to show you how I did that. First, I'm going to show you what grid trickle looks like, and then we're going to talk about how I solved that problem. And hopefully one day, EG4 will come up with a solution where this can be totally automated. Because it seems to be a problem not just for Dave, but it's a problem for other solar addicted folks out there who have hybrid inverters and don't want to send any energy to the grid or use any energy from the grid unless they absolutely have to, better known as running with grid as backup, and that's how I run my system. So this is what grid trickle looks like. I went back, uh, I disabled off-grid mode so I could show you guys what grid trickle is. You can see right now, even though I'm set to self-consumption, I have space available in my batteries. It's not at 100%, we're at 82% and 670 watts is going to the grid right now. To verify that, I go to Emporia View. I have a grid monitor. I have CTs on my grid connection. And as you can see, it's fluctuating all the way up to 800 watts going to the grid. And it peaked out at 1137. If you look right there, it's 1137. So that's a lot of juice. It's not some small amount sometimes. It seems to be at, at its worst as far as grid trickle between 70% battery uh, SOC, state of charge, and 90%. Uh, Somewhere up in there, right now we're at 82, and you can see it's pretty bad. It's 819 watt, 847 watts. At the top right, we could see a live view of what's going on with my grid connection. So we really need to minimize that if we want to try to maximize our efficiency on our system. And if you don't have a grid cell agreement, that amount of juice going to the grid is not going to make the power company happy. So we need to go back to off-grid mode until I get close to that 100%. And we'll show you what we do when we get there. Okay, so let me switch it back to off-grid mode so I don't waste any juice. See, it's showing here on the uh, EG4 monitor app that 761 watts is going to the grid. That uh, Emporia view view is, is actually a live view. And that's uh, EG4 is every three minutes or so it pulls the inverter. So it's not a live view like this Emporia view monitor I have is, is really showing you a live view. So let's switch that back to off-grid mode so that we can maximize our efficiency. Got to go to the master, got to click read, and then I'm going to enable off-grid mode. We heard the relay in the background, and we should see a huge difference. There it goes, zero watts. 
So we went from sending 800 and something watts with a peak of 1137 to zero by being on off grid mode. So here we are again, my everyday routine is to try to be as efficient as possible and have a zero for my grid usage, be 100% efficient, 100% energy independent. We're at 98% right now, and we're still getting production from our AC coupled array, and we're in off grid mode. We could see that our PV is still coming in. Uh, we have, uh, this is our AC coupled array here. At the bottom, it comes in as auxiliary power. But uh, we're going to pretty soon have to switch to on-grid mode because it's going to cut off my AC coupled array. It's going to throttle it down when it gets closer to 100, and it's going to drop my production unnecessarily. I need to disable off-grid mode and go back onto the grid so that it'll continue to produce AC coupled array. And if it, my batteries get to 100%, it could even start selling to the grid. It's the only time I wanna sell to the grid is when I have 100%. So we're gonna come back and uh, switch, show you that switch as soon as we reach that 100%. We're 2% away. Uh, right now we're adding 4,660 watts to our battery and the loads are being satisfied as well by the PV. Okay, so we're at 99. So now we got to cross that 100 threshold and we will see our production drop drastically. It won't just be the AC coupled arrays. The AC coupled array will shut off first, but then the DC coupled will start clipping and, and because there's nowhere to put it. When there's no grid connection, it can't send energy to the grid. If the battery's full, it just sends it to the grid, which I have an agreement to do, but I want that 100% before I do that, and um, there's no way to really automate that right now, seems like it, with the software. So this is my solution, and it works as I'll show you in a graph. Still producing on SP1, smart port 1 on the grid boss, 2181. All right, we just hit 100. And notice we're dropped off a lot. So if I go back to here, there it goes. AC auxiliary power, PV power is zeroing out. So this is the point where I have to switch back to on grid mode or disable off grid mode, should I say, so that I don't lose any production. So I'm gonna go to my master go to maintenance, read all, and I am going to disable off-grid mode, control successful, we heard the click in the back, the relay, all right, we should be good, it's going to take a little while for this to start showing up again, it's as much as a few minutes, but now we're at 100%, and it's still trying to cram a little bit in there. But you can see it starts playing with the grid a little bit. Let's see if that's actually real. Uh, this is my grid monitor here. So yeah, it is pulling 400 watts from the grid. Now it's dumping energy to the grid. It looks like it turned them back on. Let's see. Or is this just my DC coupled arrays? This is probably just my DC because that's not enough power. Yeah, AC coupled array is still down to zero, but we are getting PV power roughly about 5,000, 5,500 kilowatts of just DC. And our load's 1.7, so that makes sense. We're getting uh, 3.5 going to the grid and only 260 watts going to the battery. Let's go back over to the EG4 monitor. Let's refresh that. And now it's showing that we're sending energy to the grid and it's from our DC coupled arrays. It's not from our AC coupled array because this SP1 would be that AC coupled array on smart port one of the grid ball. 
let's go back to our master you can see we're producing pretty good on the flex boss 21 close to 4,000 so most of it's on the flex boss right now okay we just kind of had a little jump there I think we might have had it kick in right when I went click okay now we're getting up to that number we're close to the seven kilowatts so it looks like they probably just kicked in let's go here real quick go down to the bottom there it is auxiliary power so one leg of it's kicked in and it should be another one kicking in in a second there we go looks like the solar just jumped again a little let's go over here refresh still not showing on eg4 now we're up to 7.5 that's about what i expected at this time of day and there we go auxiliary power 1.09 1.09 doing it 50 50 between the two inverters and let's see if she finally shows up on eg4 which lags behind solar assistant that's why i use solar assistant so much there it is so that finally SP1 smart port one is finally showing the 2180. That's uh, what my AC coupled array is producing. And now let's see what solar assistance says. It says the same thing because it's already, <laughs> it was already ahead of the game. So that's how I keep my um, grid connection looking so clean. I don't have any grid trickle as I call it. Uh, let's show you other than um, a test I did yesterday let's do a 30 days and show you what I'm talking about see this was a, a blip here that's not a real thing um, this was a quick charge that was a quick charge so we got two quick charges and if I go down to my grid connection and we look at our grid connection grid power here all we see is those two quick charges and as we go down we could see that the power is either zero or I'm selling and I only sell when I have a full battery but grid power stays as zero other than those two quick charges and when I'm selling then we get into the negatives okay but that solves grid trickle using off-grid mode off-grid mode and when it gets close to 100% to prevent our my arrays DC and AC coupled from actually shutting down production I have to switch back to on-grid mode and then once my battery gets below say 98 percent and i know that there's not going to be any more solar for the day i switch it right back to off-grid mode to prevent any energy going to the grid unless i absolutely wanted to and that's only when my batteries are full to 100 percent so i hope you enjoyed the video i'd appreciate it if you could subscribe and like the video it does help with the algorithm if you like the material i'm producing it would help me uh, get the information out to more people doesn't cost you anything and it really helps with the algorithm and i'm really trying to grow the channel and i would appreciate your help so i hope you enjoyed the video and take care and we'll see you next time for watching hope you enjoyed our video